and here we go. So welcome everybody. It's Sunday and this is day six of our Freestyle Libra Challenge. So um, tonight's going to be fun because the tonight is going to be the first of your uh, blood sugar hacking. So a lot of you, we reviewed on Friday how to upload, um, or we reviewed, yeah, how to upload your data. And I think you're all familiar with that process now. Or that was on Thursday. Yeah, that's on Friday. We had Rosalind. And so tonight we're going to look at the data. So what I want you to do is if your screens, we're going to open up in just a moment. I'm going to go through a few slides and then I'm going to let you look at your own data. And then for anyone that wants me to open up their file, I'll be able to do that online. All right, so here we go. So first thing I wanted to show you tonight, though, <laughs> is I just saw this. I had to post. Never be afraid to try something new. Remember, amateurs built the ark, professionals built the Titanic. And, you know, I really put this up because, you know, so many times, especially with something like this device that you're using, often people think, well, you know, I need to see the dietitian or I need the nutritionist to tell me what to do. But you don't. You are going to be the person that's most capable of making the changes. I'm going to give you some tools to use, but once you have those tools, then you'll be able to see what's going on. And then, of course, ask for help when you need it. So what we're going to be doing tonight, all right. So what I'm going to get you to do once we turn the screens off is to review your first week of data. So most of you know by now that when you go into your screen, what you're going to see is the first screen is going to be your date that you're at. This was my date back in February. It's going to give you your average sugar, and it's going to give you this little graph, okay? So the first thing I'm going to have you do tonight is to go into this graph, and then we're going to kind of dissect this down. And what we're going to do with this main graph is we're going to go in and we're going to look at the mornings, okay? Then we're going to, sorry, uh, we're going to go in midnight because it starts on the left-hand side is midnight to six. Then we have six to 12. Then we have 12 to 6 p.m. And then 6 p.m. to midnight. And what I'm going to get you to do in each of these sections is to look at, number one, where did you see most of your spikes? So for me and many of you, you'll see most of your spikes are around 12 and probably around 6, because it's most likely when you have your, your, um, your dinner and your supper. But, and of course, some of you will have it with a breakfast spike as well. But what I want you to look for is, are you having highs here in the middle of the night? Are you having highs really late at night? Or are there times throughout the day that you're starting to have some problems, okay? So that's gonna be number one. We're gonna look at the time of day. So the time of day, and you're gonna see which area needs the most work. That's your first question. Time of day and which area needs the most work? Or maybe time of the day, and are there any concerns I have for that area? Then what you're gonna do is go into glucose reports and for those of you that have been online, you're just going to hit this blue button into glucose reports. And then what it's going to give you, it's going to give you the full range of all your glucose data. And once you get into the data, you're going to scroll down. There's a lot of information there. But then what I want you to do is to pick a day. All right. So this is number two. So as you go down through your data, it's going to show you day by day. I want you to find one of your spikes. Okay, so I just put, picked someone by random and I found out that the spike, so um, it was first when the monitor was put on, it looks like. And so 10 o'clock, there was, um, you know, around 6.8, but then just after lunch, so I'm guessing this probably was eating something for lunch and it took the person up to about 14.7. And then it took a, a few hours for that spike to come back down to seven. So in this spike, you know, I would be saying, number one, because you're all going to be a little different. So what I looked at here is you can see that the spike went over the gray zone. So remember, in Canada, you're looking for about 3.9 to 10 or 11, depending on how you're, you've been set. In Bermuda, we're looking from 70 to 140. But the computer is basically showing us if you're outside your gray zone, then that's probably not an acceptable spike. So this is hack number two, is find a spike and hack it, okay? So you're gonna say, okay, how do I hack my spike? All right, so I'm gonna give you some tips. 
and I lost my tip slide. Let's see where my tips are. Here we go. Okay. Top 10 tips for blood sugar control. Now I have many more, but these are some of the 10. Okay. Number one. So once you look at your spike, you're going to say, what do I need to do? First thing is, was it real food? <laughs> so that's a question to ask yourself. Was it from a box or package? Uh, if not, then you eat real food, food that doesn't have a barcode on it. Number two, uh, for sugar control. Now, this is something that you can begin to experiment is eating within an eight to 10 hour window. So you can start narrowing your window. So what does this mean? If you typically ate, you know, you know, you had breakfast at seven and then you ate supper at like eight o'clock at night, then you've got like a, a 12, a 13 hour window that you're eating. So one of the things that you can begin to do, because remember week two, which is what we're on going into is all about empowerment and fine tuning and hacking. So you can start to narrow your range of eating. Another tip, an easy one, is don't eat before bed. Now, some people will say how many hours? You know, preferably at least two hours before bed, especially if you're noticing that you're getting those spikes um, at nighttime when you're sleeping. So think about that as another tip. Eat mindfully. So one of the things that you can do, and later this week, we'll have uh, Nurse Douglas on, who's a nutritionist that, that does a lot of gut health, and we'll talk about this, about slowing down, chewing your food well, not having television, not having distractions, and why that's important. Number five, no carbs on an empty stomach. That's kind of my rule. So that kind of makes you think, okay, if I don't have an empty stomach, it means I have to eat something with my carbs. So this goes along with uh, Sarah, um, dietitian Sarah, when she said no naked carbs, okay? Another hack you can think about is take a short walk after your meals. So you've always been told, you know, you can't go swimming after you eat, right? Because swimming is quite an intense exercise, but you can go on a very short, gentle walk after your meals and start to experiment this week to see what it does to your blood sugar. The other tip for you is for overall control. So eat two to three meals a day, reduce your snacks. Because as you look at your data, what you're going to start to see is that, wow, I have a lot of spikes because I was eating and then I had a snack and I ate and I had a snack. So one of the things I want you to think about this week is maybe reducing yourself to just three square meals a day. You know, the way they said that our grandfathers ate. Or for some of you that do intermittent fasting, maybe you want to go just to two meals a day. But even if it's three meals a day, just trying to reduce the amount that you're snacking. I think that can be a key for many of you. The other little tip. So maybe you found a meal you're going to look at. Oh, I, you know, I had this like my pizza example, if you remember. So I can have my pizza. But when I added a salad before my pizza, then I was able to keep my glucose down, my blood sugar down. So this is a tip. So eat your vegetables first and your carbs last. So many people will say, start your, always start your meal with a little salad or a little bowl of soup. And remember that was often in many cultures, that's how they began to eat. So some type of vegetable at the beginning and then try to save that carb for the end. So for example, if you're having meat and potatoes for supper, okay? So maybe you have meat and potatoes and green beans. So eat your green beans first, then eat your meat and then begin your potatoes. So you don't have to leave them till the very end. But don't start with a big few mashfuls of mouthfuls of potatoes because that's going to spike you even higher. The green beans, as you chew them, um, and preferably not canned ones because have less fiber. But as you chew that green bean that's been steamed or something, it's that fiber is going to slow down that blood sugar spike. So that's another tip for you. Now another one, and we spoke a little about this the other day, was having apple cider vinegar before your meals. So we have some evidence that this does lower the blood sugar spike. So when is the best time to have it? Well, ideally it'd be about 30 minutes before. I know that's not always possible, but maybe if you were gonna be having a big dinner, like it, say it's your supper and you always know that you have supper at six, then maybe at five, you could try to put in, okay, I'm gonna have a little bit of apple cider vinegar, just a, a teaspoon or tablespoon, you can try it out, put it in a glass of water and drink it down. And then my other key tip, uh, which will help you on an overall basis is focus on muscle strengthening exercises. Because as you're trying to tighten up your glucose control, if you have mu more muscle, more muscle means more mitochondria. So mitochondria are the battery packs within our cells. When you have more of them, you're gonna burn more calories just at rest, okay? 
So that can be another tip for you as you kind of continue on on this path. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop the share and we're gonna go in and take some questions. <laughs>